Stylish and classy, Daniel Craig's Bond goes out with a bang. Finally releasing in theaters October 8th, 2021, Daniel Craig is back with his fifth and final outing as Bond, and what a way to go. This 163-minute spy caper breathes new life into the franchise with its stylish action sequence and down-to-earth characters. I remember going into the theater for 2015 Spectres with the highest of hopes that it would be a worthy successor to Skyfall, and unfortunately, I was disappointed. Until now, No Time to Die is, in my opinion, the worthy successor. And that's not to discredit Spectre, as it did set up certain character arcs that were followed up in No Time to Die. What Spectre was able to establish with Bond and his relationship with his fellow MI6 agents was something that never seemed complete. It started to pull on threads that would unwind Bond and show a more personable side to the character. And instead of bland characters, this film, No Time to Die, was able to t take those threads and reveal Bond. It was able to show him in a more 3D way. We weren't stuck with bland characters the whole entire time. And that's not to mention the action sequences. Instead of action for action's sake, we're treated to methodically planned out sequences that fit the narrative. In other words, nothing seems out of place and everything doesn't feel forced. It all feels kind of organically brought together. The film follows Bond on his mission to save the world from a biochemical attack from the villain Assassin, played by Rami Malek. The opening sequence here is, tr is truly astounding. Taking place in Italy, the scenery is beautiful and should be the perfect retirement setting for Bond. Unfortunately, he is thrust back into the action at the hands of Spectre, the organization, not the movie. It's a shame that much of this opening sequence is shown in the trailers. Daniel Craig's performance is top of the line. Admittedly, I think it's his best in his 15-year tenure as the character. The character finally feels human, something that's been tried in the past but has never really hit the mark. The character doesn't feel like this over-the-top, never-hurting superhero. He has flaws and he has feelings. He's mortal and it plays a factor here. Unfortunately, the casual viewer might not notice this, but there's a sequence in the film where Bond is hurt and has to keep fighting. It's never said, but it's a subtle motion that you see Craig wince and adjust his fighting style. These small nods to the aging Bond are what I think aid the movie. Joining Craig and Malik are Ralph Fiennes as M, Ben Whishaw as Q, Naomi Harris as Moneypenny, Leah Sado as Madeline Swan, and Anna de Armas as CIA agent Paloma. Everyone here gives a tremendous performance. Malik's tortured soul of a villain is truly frightening and gives previous Bond villains a run for their money. For me, De Armas' Paloma was the standout character, though, and should stand the reason for getting more female-centric spy movies. Showing up for approximately 20 minutes, she stole every scene that she was in, and honestly is the only character I would have loved to see more of. You're late. When you're ready. Salute. I think the character of Bond over the last 15 years has grown exponentially, and in this film it's portrayed the best way possible. We're surrounded by over-the-top action heroes, and to now get a more defined, more grounded hero is truly refreshing, and I hope it becomes a trend. With a running time of 2 hours and 43 minutes, it is the longest James Bond movie, and it uses every second to tell its story. At no point did I wonder how much longer was left in the film, nor did I think that a scene went on too long. It never felt dull. Comparing this film to others in the Daniel Craig era, No Time to Die is easily my second favorite behind Skyfall, and it maybe even take first place upon further rewatches. Overall, I give this an 8 out of 10, and while this wasn't the perfect Bond flick, it surely made a point of trying to be. It was truly great.